All right, so Prime Minister, we're going to start with you with our first question. I have quite a few here. We'll try to get to as many as possible. Uh, the first question is about a report that came out in the Globe and Mail last week that talked about the brain drain that we're experiencing in Canada. Uh, they talked about it in the context that we're seeing a brain drain now that we haven't seen in two decades, but it's not about doctors leaving, it's about computer scientists leaving. So what do you have to say to that about why and how we can get more people coming in? Well, I think, first of all, to understand that part of Canadians' success has always been uh, that we've been willing to go out into the world and create success and develop and build and uh, perform admirably uh, on the world stage. We can compete and succeed anywhere in the world. So I'm never going to say that you know having Canadians go abroad and succeed is a bad thing. It's, it's a great thing. Uh, one of the things that we've seen, though, and, and it's a little counter to that narrative that's being put out there, is that a lot of people are choosing to come home right now. A lot of people are seeing the opportunities, the advantages, the, uh, the, there's a lot of capital flowing from Silicon Valley back up to Canada. We need to do a better job of generating that capital here and making sure that the support is for here, particularly around scale-ups. But there, there is something really exciting happening in Canada right now, and you feel it. A lot of folks are looking to come home. A lot of folks are uh, looking to launch things. And one of the things that I think goes to the heart of the success of why Canada is doing well right now is that we do diversity better than just about anyone else. We understand that a community and a society and a company can be strong, not in spite of its differences, but because of those differences and the capacity to think differently, to draw together different experiences, to challenge each other with different points of view, actually leads to better creativity and better success. And that's, that's what's exciting for Canada. get into the conversation about diversity a little bit later on as well, but just to keep on this theme of Canada, uh, Toby, we were having a really interesting conversation in the green room about Shopify, and uh, we had this conversation about Shopify really growing into its Canadian roots. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's funny because it, it happened kind of uh, without you really thinking about it, right? Um, something about sort of a process of just building a company in, um, up here, uh, at, at no point did we sort of say, hey, let's put you know, Canada on our homepage. And there was always just sort of this general assumption. Uh, I mean, I cannot tell you how many emails I got over the years of people in San Francisco saying, hey, we like, really like what you're doing. We should really meet for coffee. I'm like, so I'm in Ottawa, right? So this is a 14-hour flight <laughs> with a connection in between. And so um, you know, there was just this assumption, and, and, and we kind of ran with that. And, at some, and it took us a long time for, for us to really ask ourselves, well, hold on a second here. Like, why why are we sort of hiding as sort of um, almost as a quasi American entity, um, and rather rather than um, talk about the way we actually feel, which is that we're fiercely Canadian. And in, in, in such a, um, I, I think one of the uh, and I talked about this this morning in, in my opening remarks. Um, the really great news is that Shopify is um, a very successful company, and it's a, a very successful company based on a formula which is quite different from, I think, how most companies of its size are being built. Um, I think um, what the Prime Minister says is absolutely true, and I think this is something that Canada has discovered as, as part of an exper uh, experiment itself, and that we have inherited by simply being immersed in it. And so, you know, we are talking a lot about becoming a much more global company, um, and um, uh, one thing which is counterintuitive to this um, is that usually when companies want to go global, they hire people all over the world, and, and to a certain degree they do. But if you are trying to bring a product into a new market, you need to have people uh, to do it who really understand that country. And um, if, if I go to Germany and talk, ask the people there, um, it's like, hey, explain to me German culture, it's hard for them to do that, right? Like, it's actually, it's, it's a little bit like asking a fish to explain water. <laughs> and so, um, but if we, we are in Canada. We have recent arrivals from all over the world. And hiring the kinds of people who have lived for, like, moved across the Atlantic and then had the outside perspective to their own culture and then um, have lived for a little while somewhere else, those are the people who actually have the insights and those are the kind of people you bring in and that's how you do it, right? And in so many ways, um, 
this is the same reason that makes uh, that, that gives you better decisions when you're in a room or full of people who have just spent their lives there differently. And I think this is something that Shopify somehow figured out early or simply inherited as a derivative from a Canadian uh, primary culture. And um, that has led to a lot of the success we have. Absolutely. Uh, Prime Minister, I've seen you speak a few times at events, and there is a quote that you often share, which I love. And I think it really personifies what we're experiencing right now in this world of technology and changes. And, and the quote is all about change has never happened this fast before, and it will never be this slow again. And which technological change do you think is going to be most important to Canada in terms of fueling this next generation of business? I mean, one of the things that we think about is, is this pace of change is accelerating to an amazing degree. And you're having to be more and more nimble. You're having to think forward, think ahead at the next, the next thing. And you realize we don't know what the next thing is going to be. So for me, the most important piece to think about the fact that the world is changing so fast uh, and yet it'll change even faster tomorrow, which is, which is the, that accelerating pace of change. So we need to think about how we not just brace for it, but equip for it. I mean, you see around the world, workplaces are evolving, uh, you know, industries are in disruption, people are really uncertain about where the jobs are gonna come a decade from now, where their kids' jobs are gonna be. And we have to make a choice as societies. Well, do we drag our heels and resist that change and try and keep the way things used to be as long as we possibly can? Or do we say, well, you know what, the world is changing, Let's dive in. Let's head for it. Let's help shape that change. Let's figure out, yes, uh, AI is going to disrupt things. Genomics and, and biotechnology are going to disrupt things for sure. Well, do we either be disrupted or we create that disruption and we help lead it and then, quite frankly, we help shape it. And when I think about the ethical and moral challenges around some of these big issues, it sort of reassures me to think that Canadians will have a significant role in shaping this for the good of, of, of our societies and our world. So as we sort of dive forward into all these different things, what I'm most focused on is not just giving people uh, the tools, the education, the training, the opportunities to get that, but also give people the confidence to say, you know what? Yes, the future is you know, going to be challenging. It's going to be you know, difficult to deal with. There's going to be a transition into it. But it's also going to be rife with opportunities. And if anyone can handle the opportunities, if anyone can figure out how to move forward in the best possible way, it's in a place like Canada. And that's why I'm so excited about the future as we're building it. There's a wonderful Chinese uh, proverb that I think really fits. It's, um and the, the winds of change are blowing. Some people build shelter, and some people build, build windmills. And I think that's, uh, that just sums up, I think, the sentiment really, really well. Absolutely. And Toby, when we talk about change, uh, there's been a bit of a change with Shopify Unite in terms of coming back to Canada and coming to Toronto. And I think it's important, you know, we do these events, we tend to talk on stage among, amongst ourselves, but I think it's important to talk about who's in the audience and the partners who are here and maybe share some success stories for both the Prime Minister and myself and the people who are watching the live stream. Yeah, um, again, this, is a, this has been sort of a global by default community, right? We have incredible... Um, uh, people who have long before Shopify even gave people really the go-ahead to say, hey, yes, um, we, we want to come to this part of the world, but you are excited about they, they were already there and uh, talking about Shopify and, and, and you know, using it and bringing it to people as partner managers and so on. And um, this sort of, <laughs> like I, I, I often talk to people from different industries and technology, right? And it's such a funny thing to tell um, CEOs of other industries that Shopify was global by accident. <laughs> you know, that only on the internet and only in software can that possibly happen. But it, it, it's true. So like we were pulled across the globe and um, you know, we had lots of announcements today and we talked about um, you know, going to more countries. But what I'm actually really um, inspired by it's the story I, I shared about the remoteness of some of some things. You know, like one thing which is very true in the world right now is that um, opportunity, while it's abundant, is also locally concentrated, right? Like it very much, it's very much focused on vibrant cities across the globe. And so, um, Prime Minister, the story I shared this morning 
was about uh, a, sh a shipwright um, on Fogo Island who started a furniture store and entering the global economy as a um, uh, as a uh, another voice which otherwise could have gotten lost in the, the artistry of um, uh, of shipbuilding that was unique to this island would have potentially been lost. I know this is a place that you, you you've, you've been there before. Gorgeous place. Yeah, and so. Um, I think this is like these are the, the stories that really excite us. It's actually not maybe the um, I mean, not, it's, there's nothing wrong with sort of a you know Brooklyn granola granola bar kind of <laughs> businesses, which is it's cool. But like um, some uh, you know mother of four um, who has this idea, you know, making it in like the middle of Idaho is the thing that we really celebrate because again, you know, you know like. E economics matter, and um, uh, you know technology is a driver of a lot of progress and change. But it tends to reinforce the things that already kind of worked, rather than enable the things that didn't work previously. Right? Like we've seen this across the tech industry, and I think this is part of a conversation which is being had now. Um, and so uh, we really want to, um, like, we really want Shopify to be something that drives opportunity, like, uh, in a better distribution. Um, and uh, you know, help people kind of create the kind of jobs that people come back to to the communities they might have otherwise left. Absolutely, and, and Prime Minister, uh, we were also talking in the green room in terms of Shopify being this incredible platform for people all over the world. And my question for you is, how do we build more Shopify's? <laughs> um, I think that's a better question for Toby than, than than for me because you know the the challenge is that we have. Uh, an amazing uh, ecosystem of innovators, of entrepreneurs, of people trying to solve problems in Canada. Uh, the diversity, the weather, the everything, because the weather makes a difference. When you're, when you're sitting planning, planning for winter every year, uh, you know you have to be innovative about how you're gonna, how you're gonna deal with it. Uh, and, and as we reflect on these solutions, one of the big challenges Canada's always had is that as soon as we come up with a great idea, someone with really deep pockets uh, comes up from the States or someone else in the world and says, oh great, I'm gonna incorporate that into my, uh, into my platform. And how do we get Canadians to scale up? How do we get Canadian companies to become uh, you know, leaders that, that drive their own ecosystems like Shopify uh, is a big challenge that we have. And I think it starts by recognizing the extraordinary advantages that we do have in Canada. Uh, the quality of life, first of all, living in one of our great cities like Toronto, Montreal, uh, Vancouver, or uh, any other place across the country, you get a great quality of life, a great vibe. Um, there is a diversity and an openness here that means if you come up, yeah, if you come different uh, and you have a different approach on things, you can be valued and drawn on to a great, greater degree than uh, organizations that look for homogeneity and don't end up getting uh, that, that spark of, of juxtaposition that ends up generating things. And on top of that, Canada is, we're a country that has always had far too many resources than we had an internal market to be able to support them. So we've always, from the back time, fish and furs, and we've always needed to trade with the world. And that has left us global in our thinking about trade. And right now, we're the only G7 country with free trade deals with every other G7 country. We are the country that has the largest number of trade deals in terms of percentage of global GDP uh, around the world. And that means uh, that we are naturally well connected to draw on the global economy and to play in that global economy. So naturally looking at ways where small businesses that come up with great solutions can actually plug into that global world in a way that is more natural for us because we don't have a massive market of 300 million people like, like uh, our American neighbors do. This kind of opportunity or challenge can be turned into an opportunity that I think we need more of. We just have to have a little more, a little more swagger as a country, uh, a little more of an ability to promote and and demonstrate uh, how awesome we are. We don't often do that. We don't do that enough. And if there's something I've seen over the past couple of years where Canada has had a little more swagger on the world stage, it's because 
I think we've been able to lift up and point out what Canadians are doing. Canada didn't change when the government changed two and a half years ago. It, it, it is what it is. Canadians are who we are. We're just doing a better job of having the confidence that we have every right to have on the world stage now. Absolutely. So, Toby, I'm not going to ask you how we can get more swagger, uh, but I do want to build on this theme. You're doing the question for Ombre, Rob. <laughs> I know. Um, I do want to build on this theme of diversity and culture because uh, I think, uh, especially as someone who spent a lot of time working inside Shopify with, with some of your employees who are here today, uh, I've seen this incredible culture of Shopify. Can you walk us through how you've been able to build this amazing culture? Because I think there's many people in the room who can learn from it. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I, again, it, there's an advantage to coming as an outsider into a, a country, right? Like as an immigrant. It's, it's, I, you, you, um, if you ever talk to, like this sounds way too grand, I don't mean it this way, but it's something that happened. Like, uh, I, I had the opportunity to talk to an astronaut and, 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 and just sort of ask questions um, about, you know, what, what, what changes? Like, what, what, what does that do to you to be an astronaut? And, and, and um, um, she talked about um, once you're out there and you, you look back at the world, you, um, suddenly it all kind of is kind of just one thing, and, and all the kind of sort of problems down there look pretty petty. It's called the overview effect, and I think there's a minor version of that that just comes from simply, like, potentially traveling in general, and all, all, also from the move, movement. So you kind of, you, you tap in fairly intuitively into um, what are the strengths and what are the weaknesses. So the things that really impressed me in, in Canada, apart from the sort of approach of multiculturalism in general, was just the, you know, Smart, like people are really, really smart. Just like there's nothing stopping people. Like people really like philosophy. People really like having intellectual, um, deeply honest conversations about um, anything that matters. Um, people are very loyal, um, and people are very hardworking. And so, um, and but my absolute favorite part of it, fundamentally optimistic. Coming from Europe, that is the, that is like a permanent vacation for me, <laughs> frankly. Um, and so um, you take those ingredients, and, and, but, but you get to make additional edits on top. And one of those edits I had to make is, I think I spent the last 12 years running around and tell rooms full of Canadians saying, hey, you guys are just as smart as anyone else in the world. And, and just saying this over and over and over again, and do not, not allowing anyone to just slightly dial down the ambition just because of some cultural narrative that um, people somehow still believe. Um, I think that that's, that's kind of what made the difference. I, don't, I, I wouldn't even go so far as saying it was much more than that. Now when you meet shop, people from Shopify, um, you find people, you, 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 you meet the converts, right? Because um, it, as a company, as you grow up, it's very hard to ever get sort of um, check-ins. Like everything is relative. You, you, people get, I've gotten slightly better than last week. But where do I rank? Like American companies here and here and here, and we just got that one good. So, but then if you're so lucky um, and stay at it for long enough, you get to go do things like take a company public, which, you know, in technology, there's only 4,000 companies that have gone to the New York Stock Exchange, right? And so you, you start actually getting some of these check ins, which aren't just relative, but actually on an absolute level. And that builds self confidence. I think. Those things lead to um, people just dialing their ambitiousness a l just a little bit further than what you otherwise expect, and it's an amazing feeling. Great advice. Uh, Prime Minister, I, I think that I can, it's fair to say that everyone in this room, the people who are watching the live stream, know that we're entering into this new era of business, uh, much of which is fueled by artificial intelligence. We've seen more progress in AI in the past five years than in the past 50. The one thing that concerns me is how do the people who maybe aren't as connected as all of us are, how do those people become part of this story of entrepreneurial success? Well, I think there's a few things. First of all, I, I don't think it means that uh, everyone who's going to be successful over the next you know, 10, 50 years is going to be an expert because they're suddenly an expert in AI. Uh, we have some of the most brilliant minds in the world, all around the world, a lot of them in Canada, 
uh, working on AI, understanding it. I think the challenge that we have as individuals, as citizens, as entrepreneurs, as consumers, uh, is to figure out how to draw on AI as a tool and a lever to improve one's own success. Uh, and to improve your company's success. And yes, it takes a certain amount of familiarity with technology. It takes a certain amount of, of understanding about you know, how algorithms think and how, 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 how to think through algorithms, sorry, and how to, how to sort of approach with a more STEM-ish approach. But the, the real success is going to come from the people who get that STEM side of things but also have those unique human creativity, uh, you know, pattern recognition, interpersonal skills, uh, looking for a, a niche where there needs a, a solution, discovering things. So technology will be an enabler for, for success, and for those people who don't want to deal with it, it will be a barrier to success. But I'm not particularly worried about the coming generations shying away from technology. What I'm focused on is how to make the coming generations uh, intelligent users of technology. I mean, you think about it, uh, you know, Toby and I are, are, are Gen Xers, which means we are of that generation uh, that you know, grew up in an analog world. I mean, I, I became a school teacher. Uh, I was the last generation of, of teachers who learned how to teach in a world before Google sort of thing, which has completely changed research papers and, and everything. Um, and we got to see that transition, whereas I look at my kids who are growing up in a purely digital world already, they'll never know how things were. And I think that our generation is really a key element of figuring out this transition and making sure that we're bringing sort of the values and the successes of the past into a totally transformed world. and that that opportunity for our generation to do that and to empower uh, the you know, brilliant next waves that are coming along who are taking this technology and running with it, I'm extremely excited about the future and I'm also excited about the fact that you know, when, when you see the, the numbers of, of, of you know, grandparents who now are the most you know, effective users of social media out there, there's no innate barrier to using technology, especially if it's smart and good technology that, that allows you to optimize what it is you want to do and leaves sort of the innards or the back, uh, back room stuff in the back room. But that's where a place like Canada, a frame like we have around the values and morals and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms uh, that one would think about applying to a new technological universe becomes important. Because as we've seen, whether it's on you know, elections or, 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 or you know, hacking or cybersecurity, you know, there are new vulnerabilities that we don't always see. We need to make sure that we're building a system that is robust enough that ordinary citizens can just live and create and produce and be entrepreneurs and not worry about sort of the deeper vulnerabilities because we will have gathered the right people to build those in strong and resilient systems. Absolutely, and thank you for not assuming that I am a Gen Xer, but I am, so I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> uh, all right, Toby, uh, so I was watching a keynote that you did last year at Shopify Unite in San Francisco, and in that keynote, you mentioned some missed opportunities in software. I wanted you to talk a little bit about what you think it's going to take for Shopify to be this amazing North Star in commerce. <laughs> That's kind of what the entire conference is about, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, I, what, what I was uh, reacting to last year, um, and it, it's really puzzling, um, is that uh, so? Like, my life sometimes is a little bit strange because I, I spend a lot of time thinking about commerce, um, researching the history of it, and so I'm, I'm, I, I have an, I have a familiarity with a with a full picture that seems to be really rare, and that is that the, the word of commerce bartering, trading, it's at the most fundamental to the human condition. Like there's a lot of people who think that language actually developed as a, um, as a competitive pressure, um, as a fitness factor to aid the bartering and trading. Um, and that it's at the core of agrarian revolution and all these kind of things. So 
commerce really matters. It's, it's, it's very deeply human, right? And so um, somehow commerce and technology somehow don't mix in a, in a really odd way. And it, it's um, specifically, you look at the incredible, like modern web browsers, as someone who appreciates technology on a craftsmanship basis, modern web browsers are one of the marvels of the last 15 years. These are incredible engineering projects. Like they are up there with like the International Space Station in terms of uh, effort that goes into these things. So they can play music, they can render 3D graphics, they can do augmented reality, virtual reality, all these things. But they can't move money around. And why is that? That seems really strange to me. Um, because in fact, that's something like when um, Mark Andreessen took Netscape public as a sort of a kick off entire dot com later bubble, but like sort of the, the interest in the technology industry at the end of the 90s, he needed like everyone before him, uh, when people invent new technology, they have to explain the new technology in terms of the old technology. It's like the sort of a car is a better horse carriage kind of thing. Um, and so what he did is he said, imagine the Sears catalog, except now you can buy things directly without having to call us, right? And that's how the internet was pitched, and that's what the valuation of Netscape was based on, and that's kicked off the sort of dot-com age and um, the internet uh, uh, as a whole. So we started out intellectualizing the e-commerce, but then never actually added it to a browser. And so um, I, I think amongst many things that I want, and this is very specific to technology, I really want Shopify to go and actually fix these problems. Since then, actually, we've done a lot of that. Like, we've joined the W3C, which is the body which actually creates the specs for web browsers. We've had developed the web payment standard. Um, this is an official spec, so, like, supported by all our phones at this point. Um, you saw it work on dynamic checkouts today that's using this kind of thing. Like, it, 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 this is actually happening, and it's nice to, um, you know, I, I like being in the arena, right? Like, I, I, I don't like to be a critic on the side. I, I, I don't, you know, like, I, I, I do complain if it's my only tool I have to try to enact change, but I'd much rather jump in and just say, hey, let's actually solve this problem because we have a unique perspective, right? And so I think this is what we have been doing, and it's, 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 it's really, really fun to get to do this with your company when you're coming from a decade of no one paying any attention to you, <laughs> so that's a, that's, that's a specific treat. Absolutely. Uh, just one more question. And this one is for you, Prime Minister. And since we started early on in our conversation with a quote, I have another one for you from Neil Stevenson. I know you're a bit of a sci-fi fan. And this one is, see, the world is full of things more powerful than us. But if you know how to catch a ride, you can go places. And my question for you is that this kind of defines where Canada is today. And I just want to know, how do we maintain that position in the future? Um, I think we just have to trust ourselves. Uh, I think we need to know that that everything that we've managed to achieve in this world, not just in Canada, uh, has come through tremendous effort and hard work, and it has happened in very good ways. Yes, we're rife with challenges and, and you know, big issues that we have to overcome, but I think there's a lot of reasons to be confident about it and confident about the future. Quite frankly, you know, Canada... Canada is an amazing place, but it didn't happen by accident, uh, and it will continue without effort. Uh, and we have to be deliberate about it and focused on, on building up what is good and strong and right and, and creating these opportunities for each other. But I think that's what we're naturally doing, and I think there is a lot of reason to be confident about the future. When you think of, you know, no one knows what things are going to look like five years from now or ten years from now. But if I were to ask you all to imagine what the world will look like in a hundred years in an optimistic fashion, you know, I think we'd have a very, we'd be surprised by how common our vision is uh, and anchored in is issues like, you know, fairness and opportunity and, you know, clean environment and, and you know, cheap and and clean power and all these kinds of things that we know because we have confidence we're going to end up at. The question is, well, how do we move towards that incrementally right now, this week, this year, this decade? And if we keep open-minded, we keep learning from each other, we keep leaning on each other, we keep looking for ways to build 
success for our neighbors. I think that's one of the things that's so great about Shopify is that with the success you've had, and I can parry perhaps in terms of what we're thinking about before and what we're thinking about, you know, about some of the other challenges in the world, what you're doing is really creating opportunities for individual, for small businesses, for entrepreneurs to succeed in very real, tangible ways. And that's, I guess, one of the little differences or the tweaks between the, I guess, the stereotypical view of the American dream versus the Canadian dream or the Canadian way. Whereas the American dream is really, you know, you know I'm going to succeed, I'm going to be a millionaire, I'm going to be a billionaire. Uh, you know, Canada, with our peace order and good government and with our earnest good neighbor approach, uh, sometimes we really lock in that, well, if we do well and our neighbors do well, we'll, do, we'll all do well together. And that my own success comes from everyone having an opportunity to succeed. And I think that's something that, quite frankly, not just Canada, but the whole world needs a little more of. And the more we can do a better job of showing that you know, your neighbor's success is good for you and good for everyone, and we should work to build towards that, the more we get to that ideal dream of what the future could and should look like for us all. So uh, yes, let's be optimistic about the future. Let's, let's invent the future. I mean, you were talking about the difference between you know, Europe and Canada and Europe and North America in general. I think one of the great things was you know, through the waves of immigration that have you know, created this country, even going back millennia to crossing the Bering Land Bridge, people were brave enough to take, take uh, a, a chance and try and build a better life for themselves in the unknown and build a future. There's a, an amazing element of, of self-selection for success in there that has created a, a continent where people are, are excited and optimistic about the future. And yes, we go through moments where we doubt that and we worry about that. But at the same time, there's so much reason to be confident in what we can do if we work together. And to get political for a second, that that is, I think, contrasted with a fearful, polarized vision of, well, we have to protect ourselves from the future because it's full of scary things and scary people, instead of saying, well, no, let's work on bringing the best out in all of us and focus on the future in a way that is optimistic and grounded in the hard work that it's going to take to get there. I think that's the path, that's the opportunity, and that's what I like to think Canadians are all about.